Hi guys and welcome back to another painting based video. Now the last one was uh, very popular and I got a lot of uh, likes and love for that so I'm really happy. So I'm going to return with another video. So if you know me, which is a good chance that you do and you've seen my work around on other platforms like Instagram or um, Twitter, I like Ultramarines, uh, it's in the description. Um, the way I paint blue is a bit different to how you would see it say in White Dwarf or you know sort of how Games Workshop do the blue. I don't really like that blue um, and my models tend to come out uh, a quite a darker shade and, and a lot of people do ask me how do I achieve that so I'm going to show you. I have kind of been a bit blue peter and I've got a few that I have made already but I will show you uh, some examples of my blues because believe it or not they do change colour um, like from pot to pot the blue it, it does happen to other colours too that they can actually be slightly slightly different you'll notice it if you hold two pots together like this they're not the same colour but if they were the same colour you sometimes can notice that they are different which is, I guess it's just part of the processing. Um, so I will show you a model. Okay, so this is a Dreadnought. I painted this about three years ago. Where's the focus on here? That, that should be okay. So you see that blue? That's three years ago. Then I painted this guy, the Primaris uh, Ancient, that blue. See, it's a much different blue. It's a bit darker, I think. Then quite recently, you guys have seen this, I've painted this one, which is my uh, captain for my company, and he is a very dark blue. I will throw up some pictures in a second of them. And then this guy I finished today, which I absolutely adore this model. This is the uh, Lieutenant in Phobos armor. Um, again, a very different kind of blue. I have got some pictures. Uh, of those. So this one first of all is the one I just showed you so the blue is different and then this one the blue so that's um, a Vindicator laser destroyer so that's a Forge World model the blue I so I hand painted this um, in this, the, the standard way that I do my uh, other models and then finally there is Captain Fabian so yeah, as you can see it's a, it's a much different blue. I've got some old old models here so let me get rid of that. These are super old models. So these are my first uh, ultramarines that I did. So I had already done about just near a year of painting Space Wolves and then I changed over. So as you can see this is from the um, Betrayal at Kelf box set that came out yeah, about four years ago. So it's a Mark IV and then this one is just a normal uh, tactical marine. I've actually, I mean, I don't think you can see, but I've actually, I practiced um, the scratches. So some of my models, I don't think I've got any to hand. Uh, I do actually. So it may not show up, but there's scratches, or you, you can just see scratches on the armor. I did practice. That's one thing I recommend if you're trying to learn a new um, painting style or technique. These odd models are perfect, and we have to call these something. Um, so I'm going to have a, a contest, a, a comment competition at the end of this, so you can win something. So let's start from the beginning. So my models, I always prime them in a light grey. So it was actually accidental. So I've never ever liked... Um, priming in black it's not been my thing so my first um, can of primer was white and uh, it was cheap as well I didn't you know about five pounds and when I went back to get another one um, I accidentally picked up a light gray and then I stuck with it so this is light gray this one is um, it that's not from a rattle can that is I bet you I can't find it now there we go I've been doing my fingers are a bit dirty from it I use um, my airbrush, so I've had a, an airbrush for about three years and I haven't really used it until recently because uh, my airbrushes keep breaking, but I've got a good one now. So I've been doing 
that. But it's no different than a, a grey of a rattle can from, from Wilco, only a fiver. So that is my basis of all my models. And then the first thing I do is I base the model. So this is good old McCrag blue. So I do about three layers, I think, three or four, just enough to cover up the uh, primer. I know so you get you get told by Games Workshop to do two coats. Um, yeah, I say do more, you know, do do you can do two or you can do one. I prefer three. So I set a minimum at three and then I carry on. And one thing I need to show you and I have it handy is uh, a lot of people ask me how I get a very smooth finish. So I use a magic solution here I add this so most people will add water to uh, the paint in their palette to thin it but I actually use this product I hope it's not too uh, too much light it's a flow improver it's from Windsor & Newton it's fantastic um, I got introduced to that about three years ago and it just literally overnight changed how I paint so in here it's um, 90% water, 10% flow improver. I've just kind of nailed how much I need to put in a palette, like two or three brushworths of McCrag blue. I do about five or six drops of that. So once I've done that, now one thing I learned is that once it's painted, if you finish painting it this colour, then leave it. So it may look dry, but the underneath isn't dry. So leave it. I leave it half an hour to an hour something like that and I, I'm trying to remember to look at you there so once that's dry I then do some more painting so you may not notice the difference too much between the two but there is yeah there it is so that is this so it's Altdorf Guard Blue so that is what I use it is quite similar to uh, a recipe that is on the uh, box of models so I then do two to four coats I do not wash before so a lot of people will say once you've done the McCrag blue then wash it and then put your layer I don't do that I, I skip that so then Art Dove Guard blue until it's fully covered then again I leave it for a little while then I can do stuff when it's dry I can then do metallics um, it's really hard to see but I, I've done I just did the the lenses but I would do the metallics and then I wash it you should be able to see the wash on here um, that's when I do recess wash only um, and then I can start doing things like edge highlighting I have done a little bit on here it's not like super obvious but uh, I have done some and then for my edge highlights this is I mean I did cover it in my last video but uh, yeah so it's um, it's these two so that one is my main edge highlight so everything that's got an edge or a round edge gets a first dunking with that and then the Fenrisian grey I do the extreme like the top like the top of a knee pad the uh, that every helmet I paint I always leave and do Fenrisian grey and hopefully I'm just going to do a little bit just to show you guys um, and I have got my glasses on hand this time hopefully I, I just I've set the uh, the autofocus to manual it, it was easier on my last video because it was a Primaris model and they are much bigger um, but yeah so I would I hope it's obvious that the the grill on the helmet is perfect for edge highlighting so just on the you just use literally use the edge of your brush using ever so little amounts of the paint it's all right to go over again god i don't want to use the cliche like little is more but i think more is little oh uh, you'll work it out and that's you can see that there that's perfect and then above the eye lenses a bit like painting eyebrows I suppose is 
the little part just above and that is perfect it just makes your model kind of pop a little bit I have to remember to stay in, in shot it's not, not as easy to see uh, with the mini marines but that's kind of the um, the process so I'll go over it one more time so I prime um, I do assemble things uh, as in as in many smaller parts as possible so this model I would do this so I'd have the legs and the body separate the helmet separate then both arms the weapon and the backpack I'll do them all separate and then put them together so you prime in the color you don't have to do this this is just my guide uh, you know prime gray light gray then a just a base layer of McCrag blue until you can't see the primer so I would say three two five and then you do the same after it's dried for alt dwarf guard blue so two to four layers that's not yep that's it and then and then that's when you do the recess wash in and I didn't even say what the recess wash is sorry it's Drakenoff nightshade this is perfect for blue you can use um, you can use non oil for that as well uh, a lot of this is going to be based on citadel paints because that's primarily what I use I do use some Vallejo uh, so you get to that point and then you can just chuck on your highlights um, and yeah this stage metallics so not even that yeah that stage sorry I'm confusing myself yeah so once you've put the layer down and it's dried then you can do the the uh, the metallic so if uh, if they've got the Aquila on their chest some gold uh, you know silver um, and then like I say again I use this product flow improver I cannot recommend that enough to people and I have done that and people have sent me messages saying wow you was right it's really good it's really good it can be a bit expensive this is this was seven pound fifty five I think I got it for about seven quid from eBay um, art supply shops will sell uh, in the UK the range will sell um, will sell flow improver Windsor and Newton flow improver right I'm gonna come to the end of my video hopefully that's uh, it, I've explained it enough in the way that you can understand how I do my blue of course really is open to experimentation so you don't have to you, you don't have to do how I do it but um, I think that is probably the best way there are other easier ways and I said a competition so we have our little marines here and they are quite small compared to their primaris brethren what name should we give these guys are we going to call them mark 7 or mini marines classic marines i want you guys to come up with uh inventive funny names for these guys and um the one that makes me giggle the most i'm going to award you or give you this guy he is an elder farseer so it's a nice model i got this given this but I don't really do Elder so I'll, I'll give this away so think of a, a name for our old 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 style of Marines and I will pin the most funniest and the one that has the most likes I remember that like the ones you like and then by the time of my next video which will be the this coming week I will uh, just say it's I'm filming this on the 23rd end of the week I will pick that and then the winner I will contact you and you will be getting this rather handsome guy um, right and I just chuck it on the floor that's very me and forgive the background I still not got a background um, so I have patreon and I have two patrons already so I'll give you your shout outs so plutonium OD and Tim's hobby corner you guys really help if you the viewer would like to help the channel 
then of course please check out the link in the description to my Patreon. There will be links there too for um, Instagram and Twitter and my Discord server. It'd be great to see you guys. You can come and chat to me and that will be fun. And I'm also looking to get a screen so you don't see my beautiful washing machine. And then this camera here, um, it's been suggested that I can get rid of it. I'm trying not to knock my mic, it's right here. Uh, but I actually want to keep that, but I want to upgrade it to one of these cameras. So uh, any help, I'm not begging, but any help would be fantastic. Um, I hope you have found this video to be um, entertaining and informative. And if you have any suggestions for future content, then do feel, you know, feel free to uh, direct message me on you know social media or in the comments and I will uh, you know gladly take any suggestions um, and that is me done so I will catch you in the next video thank you for watching and liking and subscribing and sharing and happy hobbying <laughs>